Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering, but I also like to talk about Arduino. Hey, in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to be pulling together uh, the concepts from lectures 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, and uh, trying to make sense of them. We're going to talk about integrating those all into one big, beautiful remote control fan. So the idea is we have this infrared remote that we say, do I want you to be off, low, medium, or high? And then on the fan, it has a seven-segment display that indicates what you selected, zero for off, one for low, two for medium, three for high. And then it spins the motor at the corresponding speed, and it all uses parts that came with your uh, Elegoo Super Starter Kit. any rate, um, so what's going to happen then... Um, you know, you may need, if, if this is the first lecture you're watching, you're going to be like, he did not give me all the details. Yeah, well, if you want to learn about the IRR remote, that's lecture 13, which is video 8 on YouTube. If you want to learn about the seven-segment display, there's two options, with or without the shift registers, and those will be lectures uh, 14 and 15. If you're looking for the videos, they're 9 and 10. And then if you're looking for, well, how, what's, the, what's a brush DC motor? How do those things work? That was lecture 16, which is video 11 on YouTube. And then if you want to look for, um, well, what's this power supply module talking about? That was lecture 17, and you can go to video 13 on YouTube. And then uh, if you want to know how to drive the DC brush motor, kind of the ins and outs of the circuits, well, that was lecture 18, which is video 14. And then if you're needing help on writing the software for the um, state machine that kind of ties it all together, well, that was the last lecture, lecture 19. Uh, which presumably is video 15. And uh, in this lecture, I'm going to kind of zoom through and talk about the code, and you'll kind of see all that stuff in there, but at any point, if you're like, he's not giving enough detail, well, that's because it's in the other videos. So, at any rate, let's start with the, uh, with the end. So here it is. Here's the, the remote control fan, and I've got all the pieces there. I've got the Arduino remote. I'm holding the fan. You can see the seven segment displays is zero. You'll notice the blades aren't spinning. You see I've got this whole thing powered off from the battery. The power supply module is powering the Arduino. So it's all kind of ready to go. And uh, here I have it at state one. You see the fan is spinning. Now that's a still picture, so you can't really see how fast. You have to take my word for it. Yeah, it's spinning. And, you know, by listening, you can um, uh, tell the difference. And... Um, uh, then here on the next slide, I'm showing it at speed 2, and uh, then again at speed 3 on the next one, and, uh, you know, there is some issue that I got to in the last lecture. I think I'll touch on it here, too, about the, the IR remote not liking the fans going fast. In these still pictures, I actually took speed 2 after I did speed 3, so that does demonstrate that, yeah, I had the 3, and then I hit the 2, and it slowed down. So, uh, you know, the solution I'm proposing does seem to work. If you don't know what I'm talking about on this, we'll get to it. Don't worry about it. At any rate, so uh, what I want to do then is basically show you my code because we've already talked about all the hardware and all that, but now it's sort of like, well, walk me through. Show me how the, I would put all this together because the code is a little different than what we did before. Because before, for instance, you know, with the IR remote, we had a lot of buttons we don't need, and you know, there was a lot of things. But but let me show you what I did. You don't have to do what I did. You can do it other ways. The code's got to be clean. I'm grading on coding style. And for your state machine, I need to see it well documented. If you deviate from mine, that's fine. But your code and your state and your design need to be identical. At any rate, so we start off, of course, lines 1 through 13. That's the standard uh, top of uh, TOFIB, top of uh, file banner. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of got good practice. Uh, the business end of this begins at, co at line 15, where we say we're going to include the IOR remote library. That's important. The IR, You're going to have to use some kind of library. Um, well, I suppose you could write your own, but that's a lot of work. But anyway, we start off with that. And then I'm going to say, all right, well, here's the pins I'm going to use. For my IR, I'm going to use pin 11. For the seven-segment display, I'm using it with a shift register, so I need a clock, a latch, and a data lines, and those are the lines I'm using there. And then for my motor, I'm using pin 6. All right, and then for the the IR remote, uh, I've got a um, instantiating the class there at line 30, this IR object where I pass it the pin, and that 
somehow magically sets it up for the library. And then I've got some results uh, that are of a data type defined in the, in the library. And then I went ahead and I have these pound defines for the code that the buttons turn on. What we learned in uh, the lecture on the IR remote, IR lecture 13, is you know you'd think the zero would return a zero. It doesn't. It returns 26,775. You know the power button returns a minus 23,971. You know I don't know what's up with that. It's definitely repeatable. And so you have to. What I showed in lecture 13 is you have to kind of go through the process to sort of figure out what they are. There doesn't seem to be an international standard. Um, I'm showing you the first five. I do want. I'm not going to give you. I want you to go through that process of discovering. I, I talk you through and. In, uh, in video eight, lecture thirteen, I talk you through exactly how to do it, and you know you're going to have to do that. Anyway, so at line fifty nine. Then here's my my definitions: fan off, low, medium, and high, and then my speeds. And and here's the thing I was just alluding to. I talked about this in lecture eighteen, but um, there is a situation here where um, if you have the fans going pretty fast, what you'll might see is the IR sensor stops working and what the symptom is you you've got it at a higher fan speed and you push the remote and normally when you push the remote you, you see the very distinct pattern on the LED on the device and and at high speeds you see no pattern at moderate speeds you can look at it and say wait it you know it, that isn't the whole pattern it was doing something and uh, if I had an oscilloscope, I could debug this in 15 minutes. I don't know if it's a noise issue. Josh is thinking it's a backflow from the 2N2222. He might be right. Uh, it could be any number of things with an oscilloscope. This is a very easy task to debug. Hey, COVID-19, can't get to the oscilloscope. I have no idea what it is. So what I got is a workaround. So the workaround is this. In uh, lecture 18, I said, video 14, lecture 18, I said, hey, use a 1K resistor. Well, let's use a 2K resistor. Um, that'll start to address the Josh's backflow theory. And then uh, what I also observed is that lower fan speeds, hence lower voltages, you don't have this problem. So my fan speeds are pretty low there, 55, 62, and 70. You can, you can hear the difference. That's good enough for your homework. Um, once we solve this problem, then we'll have it you know, more reasonable. I mean, these can go up to 255, but, you know, for now, these values will work, and, you know, what do you do? COVID-19. any rate, uh, my apologies, but uh, that's the deal. I need an O-scope to solve this, and, um, yeah, don't have it. any rate, so on line 77 through 112, that's the pattern when you use the shift register. Here's uh, the codes I'm using. Basically, there's a big array. You index into the array with the digit you want to display. And there's all the stuff there. I go into grotesque deal on lectures 14 and 15, which is videos 9 and 10. Uh, you know, if you want to kind of see this for yourself. But um, there it is there. I've got it defined just like we did there. And then at line 114 through 139, that's the function for writing the seven segment display. And this one's pretty much exactly like it was in those lectures. You know, at line 123, we pass it the digit display. At line 125, we check that it's in bounds, so we're not uh, indexing the array out of bounds. And then basically, we drop the latch line for the shift register. That's that 74. HC 595, we clock out the data, line 134, we raise the latch line, boom, we're done. Again, lectures 14 and 15, videos 9 and 10, that'll square you away with all that. Now, uh, on line 141, we see what I'm doing with the IR remote, and what you'll see is this is a lot smaller than what I did in the previous ones, because I don't need the whole hullabaloo. What I do is I set up two variables, key code and received code. Received code I initialize to zero. By the way, these don't have to be static. That's fine. As written, it works great. Um, what we're going to do at line 154 is we're going to wait for a code to be received. So we're just going to sit there and wait. And uh, as soon as we get a code that's um, as soon as as soon as soon received code is not zero, which notice at 152 we set it to zero, if we do get a good, if we do get a code, at 164 we set this to one, and then it bails out. So as soon as we get any code, it bails out. Now the higher level state machine sorts through whether this is a code we should ignore or not. So this is all good. But at any rate, line 157 is is how you use this library. Uh, 159, same thing. So 157, what it does is 
that's true when there's data there. 159 is how you get to that data. And then uh, what you do at 162 is you have to restart. It's an interrupt-driven thing. You have to restart it. And uh, at 164, um, you know, like I said, then we set the flag that kicks us out, and basically it returns the key code. All right, so in terms of driving the motor then, this one's very straightforward. So we've got another function that we looked at in lecture 19. We talked about how do we determine the state. Well, what is that will take that state as an input. So you pass it the requested fan state, and it's got a switch statement. So at line 186, if it's fan off, it writes a 0 to the 7 segment display. See that at 187. And then it writes the analog pin. So the pin motor, it just writes fan speed off. But at 191, if you said fan state was low, it's going to write a 1 to the 7 segment display, and then it's going to write the corresponding speed for low to the motor. And at 196, if you said the fan, you want the fan to be medium speed, then it's going to write a 2 to the 7 segment display, and it's going to write the medium speed to the fan motor. And then at 201, if you said high, it's going to write a it's going to send the high fan speed uh, to the motor, and it's going to write a 3 to 7 second display. And then at line 206, what's going to happen is that's just writing to the serial monitor for using it. If for some reason the state's crazy, it's just going to say, yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, and that's, and that's all it is for, for driving, uh, sending, for using the state to set the motor. Now, now we've got uh, the state machine that I talked about extensively in lecture 19. But what it is, is um, we start off like this. It takes an integer, which is the button that was pressed. It returns an integer, which is the state. The state is maintained locally in this function, at least as I have implemented it. You could have done it otherwise, but this is how I did it. My technique here, it, it's very important at 226 and 227. Both those variables need to be static. At any rate, um, so check out lecture 19 for more details, but but there it is, and I've got the note. Those have to be static. At any rate, so you set those up, and then you have your switch, and then here it starts. So the first case is fan off, and you see all the code there. Now, I go through this in grotesque detail in lecture 19, so I'm not going to uh, belabor it here, but uh, that's pretty much the deal there is um, we want to... Uh, there's the code for if you're off. Then likewise, uh, you know, for fan low, again, there's there's the code. It's in lecture 19. You can, can have a look. Uh, again, for medium, there it is. For 20, there it is. And for the default state, you know, two things. We set the fan state to off, and we also set the last, you know, on state to be uh, low. It's kind of a safety thing. And then at line 320, we return that fan state. So the key is this thing determines what state, and then we use that to, to call the, the, the motor. So in our setup function here at 333, it's kind of the standard Arduino thing. For the three pins for the seven segment display and the uh, 74HC595 shift register, we're going to set those up as outputs. That's just like we did in lecture uh, 15. And for the motor, we're going to set that up uh, as also as a digital output, and, and you can get that more on that in lecture 18. And then uh, lines 341 and 340, well, 341, that has to do with initializing the IR module, and that's all in uh, lecture 13. And what I'm also doing here is right when I start um, initializing everything to be motor off. So I'm driving the motor with fan off, and then the state machine will start, and then it'll catch up. But as soon as we turn on, we set everything to zero, and so it immediately shows zero, and the fan's off, and you kind of get to a, to a safe state. And uh, what we're going to do here also is on the loop, then it's, it's really a very simple main uh, uh, background loop here. So um, we have a variable called IR button, and that's going to be which button was pressed. We have another variable, which is what was just requested um, uh, by the, the state machine. So the, the line 362, it says, hey, what button was pressed? At 363, we say, OK, here's the button. Now, what state are we? So now we have requested fan state. And then at 364, we use requested fan state to drive the motor. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. 
Um, I, uh, that'll work. Feel free to deviate as long as your code's clean and as long as your state machine corresponds exactly to uh, the code. It's, it's an obvious correlation, then, then I'm good with it. For those of you watching, like, what are you talking about? Well, this is, you know, COVID-19, right? All lectures online. Hey, this is part of Biola PHC S322 or something like that. At any rate, it's uh, embedded software and, uh, you know, hey, welcome to my class. At any rate, I have one last thing. you got to test this thing. And what you're going to do for the homework is you're going to shoot a video of this thing working. And what I want to see in the video is, first of all, you know, have your face in it a little bit. And then, you know, just kind of say hi. The video doesn't have to be long. Just cover all these things. And these, this is how I want you to test it. Now, before you make your video, run these tests, you know, to make sure the stupid thing works. But, but testing is very important. And I'm kind of dignifying it here. So the first test case is power up your board. So, you know, unplug the battery, plug it in. Verify the fans off, verify the seven segment display indicates zero. That's case one. Case two is uh, repeat, you know, right after case one, press power. And so it was off, now press power. And what we expect to see, if everything's initialized uh, correctly, it'll turn on, but it'll turn on to low speed. That's how I designed the state machine. Remember all that initialization where we set last on state? This is how we're testing that, okay? Now for case three, what I want you to do is just simply press one. Verify the speed is the fans going low. Verify your seven segment display indicates one. Now press, for case four, uh, press uh, one then press power, so now it's off, then press power again. It should be in state one, it should come back to where it left, so verify it's at low speed and verify the seven segment display indicates one. Now for case five, just press two, verify medium speed, verify the display says two. Similarly, we're gonna press two and then press power and then press power again. It should be back at medium. The seven segment should say two. Now for case seven, you're just going to press three and verify that, you know, it's going at high speed. Verify the seven segment display indicates three. By the way, when you're shooting the video, please say, this is case seven. You know, this is case eight. Like, help me know what you're doing. Um, at any rate, so for case seven, just hit a three. Verify that works. For case eight, you're going to hit three and then you can hit power. Then you can hit power again, and you're going to verify it comes back to high speed. And you're going to verify it's speed three. Uh, and also, you know, do it slow enough where I can see the display change and, and so on. For case nine, what you're going to do is you're going to press zero, so it's off. And then I want you to press up five times. And the first time you press it, it should go from zero to one. The second time, one to two. Third time, two to three. And the last couple times you press it, it stays at three. I'm checking that it doesn't wrap and it doesn't go to some crazy thing. Now for case 10, what it is, uh, I want you to set it to three. Press the three and then hit down arrow five times. Verify three goes to two. Press it again, two goes to one. Press it again, one goes to zero. Press it again a couple more times and verify it doesn't do anything crazy and it doesn't wrap around. Um, case 11, what we want to do is go to state three. So press three, so now you're high. Then press down one, so you're now medium. Press power, press power again. That should come back to two. So we're kind of checking that nothing gets messed up when you're going up and down. For case 12, press a 2, and then up, then power, then power. Verify it's high speed. Verify the segment, seven segment display indicates a 3. Anyway, I think with those test cases, those ought to be sufficient for this. Um, you know, that's uh, rigorous, but the difference between developers who get everything right and developers who get a lot of things right is, is this kind of rigor. And, uh, you know, especially since I do medical devices, uh, you know, we just can't have errors. And so we're, you know, this is actually kind of light. If you saw the testing we do, it's like way more test cases. So, um, you know, that's part of being a good engineer is learning to test your own stuff so you don't inflict others with your bugs. At any rate, hey, thanks for listening uh, for the class. This is the last of the technical lectures. I'm going to have a few more. I'm interviewing some engineers on kind of what it's like to be an engineer. That was some feedback I got in one of our live Zoom sessions with the class, so I'm going to do that. At any rate, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, hey, if you haven't done so yet, can you please subscribe? That helps me out. Leave a comment. I'll comment back. 
And if you want to find more videos, TomOrchConsulting.com. There's pull downs to get videos on Arduino. And also most, I mean, my doctoral stuff is leading engineers. So, you know, go there, have a look at that. And um, also, if you would, uh, if you want, if you're on YouTube directly, you can search on Dr. Tom Ulrich. And I, I dream of a day when you can type engineering leadership guy and my name comes up. I think we're not quite there yet, but, but you know, someday. At any rate, uh, hey, stay safe in this COVID craziness. And uh, we'll talk. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later.